Hello and welcome to DevToberfest. Today we're talking about how to deploy an application to the Kima runtime. First I'm going to show you how to do it using the command line interface and then I will show you how to do it with the Kima console. So let's get started. You will learn not only how to deploy the application but also how to create an NPM package, a Docker image and how to deploy that Docker image then to the Kima runtime. But first, let me walk you through the application. What you see here is the index.html file, which builds up a simple HTML DOM, uh, consuming a style sheet, uh, using a JavaScript file for the number generator methods, and just building up the general outline of the website you're going to see in the following up exercises. Let's take a look at the CSS file. The style.css is just a simple CSS file accessing the DOM and styling the elements. In the JavaScript folder, you see the number generator uh, JavaScript um, file. It has an array containing five elements called generated numbers. This will contain all the generated numbers later on. Then it has a method called generate number. This is just using the math.seal uh, me method to just generate a random lottery number here. In this case, we have the generate function here, uh, iterating over the array and filling it with random numbers and the give winning numbers method being used to fill the base numbers label and the p number label which is the powerball label with those numbers for the index.js file uh, we're using http package also express as a web framework the path package and then we just build up our app here we expose the static, uh, static elements in the JavaScript folder and the CSS folder to our app. And then uh, every time a user accesses our index.js, like our application, it just returns the index.html file and exposes the whole thing on the server over port 8017. So let's get started. First of all, we want to build an NPM package of, out of our application here. To do so, we're going to open a terminal in Visual Studio Code. If you're not using Visual Studio Code, you can also just open the terminal app or an iTerm uh, terminal. And um, that's basically it. Here, we just say npm login. I already did that. So we can just start calling npm help in it to see how to initialize an actual npm package for those who don't know. We're not going into deep detail here, but uh, it's pretty helpful if you're new to the whole thing and you want to get an overview, what you can do with the NPM in it. But basically an NPM in it just gives you a basic um, flow on how to create all, um, the NPM package with all the information it needs. So we can call NPM in it and then you see here we can give it a package name. The package name would be number generator in our case. Then the version would be 1.00, that's okay. The description, we just put something in here. Um, let's see, this is a basic number generator. Uh, application displaying the generator uh, generated uh, numbers. Then we just keep going. Index.js is our entry point. We don't have a good repository in this case. We don't want to put keywords in. We can put an author in, which is me and our standard license. It will give us uh, a summary of what we put in and then we just confirm. And with that, we've initialized our NPM package. Let's clear the terminal. So now that the NPM package is in uh, initialized, we see the package.json appearing, containing all the information we just put in the setup. And with that, we can just say NPM install express because this is the, the package from the npm we are going to use. So this is going to fetch the express package and installing it into our project. We see that here with the node modules folder appearing and the package log JSON appearing. And uh, so we're good to go. Our application basically works now. Next part is to actually create a Docker image out of our application. The reason why is with the Docker image, we can simply deploy that image to our Kima cluster later on because that Docker image is going to contain all the information Kima needs to start up our application service on the Kima runtime. So let's do this. We cleared out our console 
and with that we get started here so first of all let's create a docker file you see the docker file appearing we go in and then we can start building up our docker file here first of all what we want to do is we want to tell uh, docker what kind of image we want to use as a base so we're saying we want to use node and we want to use the latest version next we want to define the working directory so we say work dear and this is going to be slash app then we want to define uh, all the app dependencies which are needed for the application to run and we would define is as a wildcard for both the package chase and the package lock chasen so they are copied properly so we say package star dot chasen and then dot slash and uh, now we can say um, define our run command which is going to be npm install and how to uh, bundle the app resources which is just going to be a copy here then we want to define on which port our application our image is going to be exposed and uh, we want to do this over the at17 and in the end we define what commands should be run here we want to say node as well as our index.js. Uh, the whole file is also in the SAP Samples Schema Runtime Virtual Event GitHub repository you have access to. In the exercises folder you find the exercise 3. And in here you will find the whole project we're going to build in that video so you don't have to type that up we have everything in there um, and comment it as well so you can just copy and paste it out of there if you want to okay go back to visual studio code we have our uh, docker file created here and everything in there we need to create the docker image actually to do so we can use the command line we have a terminal open here and then we can just say docker build minus t and then we just put in uh, the your Docker username slash the number generator, and then with that you just hit return. And what it does now it executes that Docker file and builds your Docker image out of the definition you've had in the Docker file. So here you see step one of seven from node latest. This will take a little bit because it's going to fetch all the dependencies and everything you need. So let's just wait until that finished. All right, we see here the command line is going through all the steps we've defined at the Docker file. And then in the end, we should see that it's got successfully built and it got successfully tagged with the tag we defined. Um, let's clear the console real quick to make it a little bit more clear for you. And then from here, what we want to do is we want to actually run our created image um, first of all let's see if the image got created we can just say docker images and we see the docker image got created we have an image id we have the tag we have the created date and we have the file size and now what we're going to do is we're going to ex uh, actually run that just created image right and to do so we can just say docker run minus p then the internal port and our external port 8017 and you can see that in the docker file it gotta be the same port we defined in there and then from there we just say minus D and then we just put in whatever we tagged our image with so let's see what that means so docker run tells docker that you want to run a specific image in a docker container through the minus p flag we say that the public port should be redirected to a private port inside the container with the minus d flag we can tell docker to run the container in detached mode so the container is running in the background the docker image is running we can use docker ps to actually print out the uh, the the all the information about the running Docker images and we can see here the image is running it's got it got created 17 seconds ago we can see the ports and those kind of things now we can copy the container ID and with that we can just 
get us the Docker logs for that container ID. And we see service listening on port 8017. Now we know our Docker image is running properly. Let's clear the console. What, we, what you could do is if you create a Docker image and you want other people to use it or you want to make it accessible to the community, you can push it to uh, the Docker website itself so people can consume it. You can do this via Docker push. We're not going to do this now because I've already done that for you. Um, but basically the command looks like this. Docker push and then you can put some options in there. And uh, basically what you do is you give it a name and a tag or like multiple tags here. Um, as I said, I have already done this so you can, can consume in this exercise um, my pushed Docker image. And let's see how this looks like. So we just go to docker.com. Here you can see the number generator. And here you have the Docker commands for the Docker push. And under tags, or actually, yeah, you see the tags here, which is latest, which, which was eight days ago. You could put a readme in. And we have like all that beautiful cookies here. Let's get rid of that. Then you have the tags tab. And, and here again, you see the tags and, and the OS and the compressed size. And you see how you can actually fetch that image via the Docker pull. And now uh, you can like see the collaborators and the builds. And I've linked that to my GitHub. So I can actually have that image laying on living on GitHub as well. And um, it's a great way to share um, your code and your images there. But as I said, I've already done this for you, so let's get rid of that. All right, now that we have a Docker image and we created the npm package, we actually want to deploy the whole thing to uh, the Kima runtime. And um, to do so, we need something which is called a deployment YAML. You can call it anything you want as, as long as it's a YAML file. And for those who know um, Cloud Foundry, you're familiar with the YAML files for deployment. So here we just make sure we're in the right directory and then we just create a deployment YAML and we go in and then we have to fill out all sorts of information here, right? Because I'm kind of lazy, I prepared that. <laughs> and uh, you find the finished deployment YAML file in the GitHub repository I've so, uh, showed you before. So you just go back to the number generator base project and then in there you find the deployment YAML and here you can just like take the whole file or just copy the text inside. So let's just copy it, bring it into our um, Visual Studio code, paste it in our deployment YAML and save it. But let's go through the whole thing. So first of all, we want to define an API version, which here is like V1. Then this is going to be a service. So kind is a service. Then we can put in some sort of metadata, which is just a, the name number generator. And we have the uh, specification. Here we can define a port which is HTTP, and the port is AD17, which got to match um, the port we had in the Docker file for our Docker image. And you put in, um, again, here our deployment, which is app slash v1, and again, some metadata. And in the specification here, you can define how many replicas you want to have. So Kima or Kubernetes knows how many replicas it has to start up for this application service. And um, yeah, from there, you just like fill in all the information down there in the container. You can define what kind of image you want to deploy. Here we are using, of course, the image I've created. If you have your own image on your own repository, just replace it um, with whatever your URL is here. The image pull policy says if this image is not present locally, you want to actually pull this new image. Again, here we define the port and the resources, the limits, how much memory uh, we want to give um, to this deployment. Down here in the environment, we have like the DB type. So if we want to have a database, we can have that here. Um, we just leave this in memory. Of course, we're not going to use a database now, but we just leave that in here. Um, so we have it in case we need it. So let's clear the console. Now that everything is in place, we can um, check if the Minikube is all fired up and running with our Kima on it. And um, to do so, we can just simply put in Minikube status, and then we should see that um, the host is running, Kubel is running the API server, and the Kube config is configured as well. And uh, now we can just execute our create statement with kubectl create minus f. 
then deployment.yaml, which is our deployment YAML, minus n defining the namespace, which is stage. Actually, let's do it on um, Devtoberfest and hit return, and we should actually get an arrow here. Yep, here we go. So it's saying, oh, we don't have a namespace Devtoberfest yet, so what we want to do is we want to create a namespace. To do so, we can just simply execute the create namespace command here, which is kubectl create namespace and then devtoberfest. We hit return and we see our namespace devtoberfest is created, and then we can just rerun the kubectl create minus f deployment yaml minus n devtoberfest. And then you see the service number generated got created, and um, it also got created as an app in here, everything we want. That's like out of our deployment yaml configuration and um, we're good to go so it's clear console what we want to do lastly if you don't haven't done it yet we want to make sure that our minikube I, uh, ip is configured in the host file for that we can call sudo them and then the host file and then it opens up the host file and um, with the i command we can enter a new or insert a new line and then put the minikube ip in there if you're wondering how you get your Minikube IP, you can just simply fire up a terminal and say Minikube IP, it spits out your IP, and then you just simply enter it in here. You can exit and save the host file in the Vim editor with WQ and then hit return. And that's it, you've edited successfully your host file, um, added the Minikube IP in there, and now we can um, curl our uh, application um, address. And uh, as we're not getting an error here, we're good to go, and we've deployed our application successfully, which is great. So opening up the Kima console, we can actually make sure that everything nice and perfectly done here, and we see it's like one of one pods, and we have one deployment, in one pod and if we drill into the deployments we see our number generator up and running with the image here with the version and in the pod we can see our running pod now that we've deployed our application our docker image directly over the Kimak CLI over the console um, we can also do the same thing in the UI with the Kimak console website and uh, in here we can just simply say add new namespace and then we give it a name which is devtoberfest and we can define some labels and let's do uh, dev equal um, toberfest no let's let's call it kima sample and then we just say create and then we see we have zero deployments zero pods now we can deploy a new resource which is simply our deployment yaml and so we can just browse for that deployment yaml and um, the Kima console is doing everything for us, all the, all the CLI commands it executes behind the hood. And um, we can see the UI is spinning here and uh, actually creating and starting up a new pod and now deploying our Docker image. So we've deployed um, our application, our Docker image via the Kima CLI, and we did the same thing in the Kima console. And with that, I want to close today's session. And um, so let's just recap real quick. We created an npm package. We um, created a Docker image out of our application. We did go through the application code, and I showed you, as I said, how to deploy it over the Kima CLI and the Kima console. So thank you for watching and see you next time.